I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? So let me get this straight. We did a Mortal Kombat movie, a reboot. 2021 has a 50 million dollar budget, pretty decent budget. I mean, when they the first movie in '95 had about 18 million dollar budget, so this is a little more than three times that budget. Caves okay, getting an R rating. You don't have Johnny Cage because he's problematic. But he's not too problematic because he'll be in the sequel. But he's white and problematic for the first film. But in the second film, he's okay. I don't know how that makes sense. It's called Mortal Kombat with a K because that's the name of the tournament. The name of the tournament is Mortal Kombat. But you don't make a movie about it that doesn't have the tournament. Because that'll be next time. If there is a next time. And even if there is a next time, why should I care about next time? So, no, again, no Johnny Cage because he's too problematic. Because he's white. But he's not problematic enough that he'll be in the sequel. It's a, the title is the tournament, but it's not about the tournament. Well, the tournament they talk about in the tournaments next time. But it's not about the tournament even though it's the name of the fucking tournament. That's like making a movie Bloodsport. But there was no Bloodsport. Like, it's before the tournament. Or after determined. There is no. Then you have this guy named Cole. For what I understand it was a studio mandate. Hey. You guys have to put a guy named Cole. Because we need a new character. To introduce audiences to Mortal Kombat. As if it's a complicated matter. There's a tournament. You lose. We're all dead. The end. Wow. Thank God we got a brand new character. Oh, to explain what the magic tattoos, if you get a magic tattoo, you get superpowers. I guess that's part of Mortal Kombat. I haven't played the games in forever. So, magic tattoo, and if you kill someone, you get the magic tattoo, then you get a superpower. So, I don't know, does if I kill someone in a car accident, there's a tattoo. Does that mean I get a tattoo, and then I get eventual superpower? Is that how it works? What if the what if I'm a dentist and I accidentally pulled out his tooth too hard that he died? Do I the dentist get the fucking instead of malpractice in jail? I get a magic tattoo. We then a superpower. We have Cole, fuck Cole, fuck Cole in the ass, fuck Cole in the corner. There's like Cole combat, the rise of Cole. This type of Cole, if you get in a fucking stocking for Christmas, you would want to find Santa Claus and punch a hole through his soul. That's what kind of coal this is. This type of coal you want to stick up your ass and then in a week with a twist you get a diamond. Fuck coal. There's a point where they fight this invisible lizard, CGI lizard, that I'm like, is this the Geico Gecko 
from the de fucking gecko commercials? Gecko commercial? Is that what it is? Is that supposed to be reptile? I don't think because they said it's a reptilian creature. But when you put that out there, it just makes me think, is, that, is this reptile? This, this looks like the fucking hunter from the Resident Evil video games. You know, the invisible. Where sometimes little annoying assholes were, depending on which game you play. So, I, you get Kano. You want to know how he dies? I'm spoiling it. I don't give a fuck. A garden gnome shoved in his eyeball. Well, it's been shoved up his ass. You get fights that, honestly, the fights were not impressive. The closest that could have come to be impressive is the Sub-Zero Scorpion fight, but that's saved for the very end of the movie, which is funny because all the advertising, if I remember, I'm going to put the poster over here. What's on the poster? Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Sub-Zero appears sporadically, Scorpion, his human form, Hanzo, at the very beginning of the film. Scorpion, at the very end of the film. And, and Sub-Zero isn't in it that much longer except when he breaks Jax's arms. I would say he had a fight with Lutane, but it's not a fight. Lutane shot a fireball. He shot something. Grab Lutane. Kun Lao. Not Sub-Zero back. That's your fight. I've seen better fights when I was in school. So Kaon gets killed by a garden gnome to the eye. Almost every character is a blank slate. They're a cardboard cutout. The closest you could come is Kano. Because he actually has some personality. He actually has some charm. But he also got annoying because he wouldn't shut up. There's literally a point where the character Sonya goes. Do you ever shut up? I'm like you aren't got... She got a point because, again, Kano at least had some personality and some humor. And I'm not saying it has to be humorous. I'm not saying it has to be cheesy or corny. If you want to be do a serious Mortal Kombat, fine. But that doesn't mean the majority of the characters should be boring sacks of shit. They're boring as fuck. Can really someone sit there and tell me they give a fuck about Lu Tain in this film? Or give a fuck about Raiden in this film? Or give a fuck about Sonya Blade in this film? all blank slates that has his worst personality is this fucking piece of paper and this fucking notepad there's a ton of exposition which there's a bit too much exposition for a film that should be simple there's a tournament you fight you lose you die you lose we're all fucked the end but they gotta do so much explanation and so much exposition for shit for some fucking reason. I don't get it. The fights. They're either too short. Or they're poorly. Did. So you, if there's good choreography. You cannot appreciate it. Because the fights. They're very sporadically edited. Bah, 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 bah. Someone throws someone. You get like five angles. Or you get a close up wide shot. Close up wide shot. Close up wide shot. And I'm sorry. The director. There's a article. Collider. It was a website called Collider. Where the director is talking about. How he was working with the fight choreographer. Because he wanted to create. I quote. The best fight scenes. Ever seen on film. That's a quote. If you don't believe me. Look up Collider. Mortal Kombat interview. Uh, Mortal Kombat. Best fights Collider. Like, if I remember. I'll put the link in the info box. Oh, by the way, I should mention this was a paid request. This was a paid request, but I got fucking pissed. So I forgot someone sent in a paid request through PayPal. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's interested in requesting pretty much any type of stuff, randomness, reviews, re-reviews, anything, everything, whatever, reaction, review, re-review, I repeat myself. Because um, if you like to request something, feel free. You can do it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. With all the shit that the 1995 film gets. Because there's a new guy in town. There's a new gunslinger in town. And it shot down 
the the old movie, the old cheesy goofy movie. No, the 1995 film beats the fuck out of this movie. Because you know what? Yeah, that film has some bad CGI, which it gave a little bit of leeway to in 1995, but it's still bad CGI. There's no gore, but to be honest, I never cared that there was no gore. I know it's more combat, but that film had charm, personality, colorful characters. Each of the characters had personality, whether it be Robin Chow, whether it be Lyndon Ashby, whether it be Brigitte Wilson, whether it be Christ Christopher Lambert, where people complain, this is whitewashing, because, oh my god, they cast a white guy for rating. No, they cast a good actor. You think a Christopher Lambert is a good actor? Compared to these guys? Yes, Christopher Lambert, smiling. <laughs> Sorry. I knew it all on. I don't think so. He had a smile to his character. He had a sense of authority, power, but there was actual personality there to dip behind as to why these characters would follow this guy. Robin Shaw, he actually had personalities, Lou Tane. Even little moments where Johnny Cage thinks he's a chauffeur, he's a guy to carry the bags, so he takes the bags, dumps them in the water. Thanks for the money. Walks away. Lyndon Ashby, solid. Those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. Even Sonya Blade. When Johnny Cage is looking around, hey, we're following that girl. I just smell her perfume. They did to a dead end, and Sonya Blade, Brigitte Wilson goes, you know, I smell something too. You know what it is? I smell bullshit. Just like with this movie, I smell bullshit. And you know what? I hate to say it. Part of me wants to say, I would rather watch more Combat Annihilation, which is a piece of shit, and I don't ever want to see that film again, but at least I had a good soundtrack at Jax I liked. And that was awful. That was terrible. I would choose neither one. I would just choose the 1995 movie or Scorpion's Revenge, the animated film, which was pretty fucking good. More Combat 95 and Mortal Kombat, Scorpion's Revenge are the two best Mortal Kombat movies. Just watch those back to back instead of this shit. But I, I know someone's going to say, Gun to your head, which would you choose? I might like, pull the trigger, and they go, that's not a choice. I might like, old age, and they go, that's not a choice. I go, poison, they go, sorry, last chance. Or we're going to get someone you love. I'm like, okay, I'll choose more common annihilation, because I can laugh at how stupid and shitty that is. This is more bland and boring bad. So do you want awful, hilarious bad, or bland, boring bad? And again, at least annihilation had a good soundtrack I could listen to, and I liked the guy who played Jax. The guy who played Jax was fun. The guy who played Jax was entertaining. And those fight scenes, even they have more go into it in which they're better edited. They're not great fight scenes, but like when Jax is fighting Cyrax, th the editing seems a bit better compared to here. And also, you don't have an annoying motherfucker called Cole. I don't give a fuck if it was a studio mandate. If it was studio mandate, you know what you go? Sorry then, can't make the movie. Because no one wants to see this fucking guy named Cole. No one gives a shit about him. No one gives a fuck about him. Even people who like the film, they go, yeah, Cole sucks dick. And he's your main focus. He's your main character. That's why I keep harping on it. He is the main focus. He's the main character. Most of the fucking film is these guys, Lu Tang and Kung Lao, training the bland milk toast motherfucker about how to get his superpower because that's what it's about superpower i know there's powers in the game i'm not an expert on the video games i tried to play them back in the day i sucked ass at it so i, I played more street fighter 2 honestly but i remember liking the games even though i was sucked at them but yeah the 95 film i enjoyed and you know what? This first time director, it showed he was a first Because the way these fight scenes, I can name you a ton of directed video films I have on my wall here. From Drive, with Mark Costcos, to Jeff Wincott, Last Man Standing, Jeff Speedman Films, uh, The Perfect Weapons Theatrical, so that doesn't count. Even certain fight scenes I've seen in Street Night and Deadly Outbreak and uh, No Retreat, No Surrender 2 and... It's just pathetic. This movie is a boring... Again, Sub-Zero. 
all the marketing was Sub-Zero and Scorpion. The beginning, the origin, which they changed the backstory from what I remember of Scorpion, where he was like seemed like mind controlled. No, it's not the case. He's much more heroic where he has a wife and a kid and there's a baby as well. Uh, the family gets frozen to death. The baby's hidden. Hanzo and the Sub-Zero before he's Sub-Zero, they fight. I'm sorry, the fighting did not impress me. With just how edited it is, again, they don't let things breathe. Go watch The Raid Redemption. Go watch The Legend of Drunken Master. Go watch Fist of Legend. Even Kiss of the Dragon. Go watch some of these other action films, martial arts films. How you let someone breathe and go back and forth and then cut. Again, there's a point where grab someone and throws, and the span of grabbing someone and throwing is like angle, 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 angle. And uh, this is like back to MTV editing. Apparently, this director never saw John Wick films. Yeah, John Wick films more gunplay, but you look at the look at the physicality, look at the camera work, look at the way the choreography is let to breathe. Go watch the end of John Wick 3 when John Wick is fighting the two guys from the raid and Marta Costos. And you see how this edited. You see how it lets things breathe to be able to enjoy the choreography. You can't. It's like, cut, cut, cut. So the, and that's pretty much every fight scene. So no, I can't enjoy it. Yes, I do think the fight scenes in the 90s films were done better in what you could like I said, understand the choreography more. Let it flow better. Compared to this. Poor fucking editing. So then Hanzo dies. And then with all the marketing of Scorpion. You don't see him till the end of the movie. For about five minutes. And even then he needs his fucking loser Cole's help. To fight Sub-Zero. He can't fight Sub-Zero on his own. The Scorpion, Scorpion's Revenge would kill everybody in this movie by himself. Go watch Scorpion's Revenge. Actually, you know what? I want to get that on Blu-ray. Uh, you know what? I need to find out how much that is. I'll do it after this. I want to pit that up on Blu-ray. Maybe I'll wait until I get to the store nets and see if it's there. I've been meaning to pit that up. I want to pit that up. And we watch that. Because I enjoyed that, Scorpion's Revenge. I mean, you build all this hype and the marketing. Because what was all the marketing? All the trailer. The trailer was Sub-Zero and Scorpion. The posters. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are either up front or it's just them. And again, Scorpion's at the very end. Sub-Zero, he's not in it for that much. He's in it for to raise a bunch of ice and slam it down on a bunch of cars. The, the fight with Jack, where you saw most of it in the trailer. Well, that's not fair to say that, to be honest. But the most important part you saw in the Red Band trailer, breaking the arms. Not even breaking, but shattering. Like I said, that teeny 10 second bit with Lutane, and then the very end. You're not missing much of Sub-Zero, honestly. And then, all this backstory about Cole, when you see the baby after Hanzo has died, and Raiden takes the baby and he leaves, and then next time we see an image, it's Cole. I'm like, well, that's the descendant of Hanzo, the descendant of Scorpion. But they make it as if it's this mystery that you're supposed to ponder. No, if you've seen films, if you've actually seen this thing called films, you know, oh, picked up a baby. Now here's this person that we've never seen before. Is not in any of the games. Is a brand new character. Two plus two equals four. Yeah, that's the descendant of Scorpion. And then his superpower is literal plot armor. Now usually that's, someone says plot armor. They're saying that metaphorically speaking. Those is literal plot armor. He grows armor. And then some blades. That's his superpower. So he literally drew plot armor. This is the first time I've seen that 
literally. And Cole is such a loser, they literally call him the human punching bag at the beginning of the film. That's, I'm sure, supposed to be... He's a underdog, we're going to root for him. But it never happened, because he's a bland, boring character who's got these two ladies in his life. I don't give a shit about them. I don't give a shit about him. They take too much of the fucking time. And again, you don't need a new character to bring people into more combat. It's not that fucking complicated. There's a tournament. You lose, we all die. The end. Wow. Whew. And even if you wanted to do that, Johnny Cage, Lou, Lou Tane, they did it in the 1995 film. And that was never a worry. You could do it with Sonya Blade. You could do it with Jax. Do it from Jax's point of view. And I would say, I don't know if it was the actor or if it was the script. Maybe it's the script. With the the way these ter- these actors came about. Because Raiden is a block of wood. It makes me miss Christopher Lambert and him having fun with the role. Raiden is... This fucking sock has more personality than this Raiden. I could barely understand half the fucking shit he said. Uh, Lutane. It's not that the acting's bad. It's just, again, he's very bland and... It's like eating a cracker with no salt in it. It just, there's nothing to it. I'm not gonna... Oh my god, that's a costume he wore in one of the games. So what? That should be the easiest thing to get right. Sorry, I'm not giving it brownie points for that. So the whole goal... Oh yeah. I thought this was something they edited badly in the trailer, but no. He was born with it. What do you mean? It's a birthmark. I thought that was something they edited in the trailer. Like someone did a bad job. That's how it is in the movie. He was born with it. What? It's a birthmark. Hey, that's a a trash receptacle type thing. So what is it? Oh, it's a trash bag. No fucking wonder. This is a thing with paper in it. What? It's a notepad. Like, I'm not fucking stupid. And by the way, birthmark my ass. Who the fuck is going to think that you have a Mortal Kombat, like the symbol of the dragon, and someone just going to go, yeah, that's a birthmark. No, that's a birthmark. Let me show you a birthmark. Best way to show it. Okay. This is a fucking birthmark. Okay. There you go. Okay, there you go. That's a birthmark. See that? That's a birthmark. Okay, that's a fucking birthmark. Okay, that little uh thinky thing there. Is that that that's not a bruise, is that be being dirty, it's a birthmark. Not an actual fucking dragon. Whoever, I literally, if you legitimately, if this guy legitimately thought this was a birthmark, he's a fucking idiot. And they died of loneliness. Fuck Cole, by the way. Hashtag fuck Cole. Because he took so much fucking time from this movie. I didn't. You don't put a $50 million budget and R rating attached to it. You don't reboot it. And most of the fucking time you stuck with a lame, limp, dead, duck fuck of a character. And you know what? I don't even know if I could blame the actor. I don't know if any actor can make this blase, lame character work. So he loses the fight. Like, the first time we see Cole, he's doing an MMA fight. Again, poorly edited. Because the director does not know how to film fight scenes. Because it's a first-time director. Why would he get a first-time director to reboot Mortal Kombat? Even Paul Wallstallion Anderson had done a film before that. Granted, it was a lower-budget film, but at least he had worked in a film.
So then Sub Zero is walking around down the street, which I don't know why there were sometimes I got Masters of the Universe like He Man vibes in this. I just when you saw like Skeletor in them on Earth. Cause you have Goro come out of a fucking shed or a fucking barn. Cause Goro's on a fucking farm. You know what? If I don't fight Luke Devereaux and put him in the fucking wood chipper, then I would enjoy it. But seeing Goro f fuck up coal in a barn just seemed weird to me. I don't know what it is. You think of all the great expanses of scenery in Mortal Kombat. The thing that won't pop in my head is a fucking barn. I've seen people play Mortal Kombat with a lot of cool backgrounds. You think the imagination could run wild? Even in the 1995 film. When Liu Kang is fighting the, the guy with sticks. Lush background greenery. When he's fighting uh, Sub-Zero. Again, decent background. You know, the set that they made up. When Johnny Cage is fighting Sub-Zero. Uh, I mean, uh, Scorpion. When Johnny Cage is fighting Scorpion. You have these long, these uh, tall trees. When Johnny Cage is dodging. And then they're in that hell world with all those... Uh, like bones, skeletons everywhere. No, a fucking barn. That's the creativity, a fucking barn. So, and fuck Cole, fuck these two girls. Must be watching two girls, one cup. Sco uh, Sub Zero, blast the ice down. Oh my god, it's Sub Zero. By the way, Sub Zero is like, I am not Tim. I am Sub-Zero. Thanks for telling us as if we didn't fucking know. As if no one who would see the film would know your name is Sub-Zero. Thank you for the info. I, I, that just kills me. He was born with it. What do you mean? It's a birthmark. No fucking shit, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. So Jax is there and he rescues the three. They drive. And then instead of, they see Sub-Zero down, instead of turning around and just going back the other way, Josh is like, I'll take care of this, got a gun, I'm gonna go get him. You drive and get to Sonya. Here's where she's at. And then Jax goes around, again, another piss poor fight. With the way it's edited, I can't remember anything about these fights. I, I would say this, for people who saw the film, if you like the film, that's cool. We agree to disagree. But I would do two things. Number one, take the film, edit out the gore, because it does have good gore. Edit out the gore, and then watch the film again, and then what are your two cents on it? Number two, when you watch the film, wait two weeks, and then tell me about the fight that doesn't involve the fatality. But tell me about the rest of the fight. Because I can tell you the fight with Johnny Cage and uh, Scorpion. I did tell you. Dodge in and it goes in and it kills the little creature thing that's attached to. You know, Get over here. Johnny Cage is doing on going back and forth and kiss Scorpion in the face. And, you know, the scorpion just stomping a mud hole in his ass and even slamming Giant Tage's face. It's like, ooh, that seemed really painful. Getting back to this. So that's when you get the jacks. His arms get frozen. They get broken, shattered. Uh, now, Jack should be dead. Because here's the thing. It's, okay, his arms get shattered... They say, well, the ice cauterized the wounds. Okay. But Sub-Zero pushed Jax off. He literally slammed his head right into something and fell to the ground. I didn't think about it. You have no arms. You pushed. You're pretty fucking high up. He slams and literally his head and torso went. He's fucking dead. The Undertaker has come by. He's now buried six foot de deep. He's buried in the ditch. There's no coming back from that. Not because of the arms, but like that. And it makes me go, then why did he even do that? You left him with his arms there, and I wouldn't question it. But they had to go the extra mile. Push him off. Boom. Gets hit there. I'm like, 
he's fucking dead. His head got smashed up. His brains are splattered on the ground. Fixing his arms ain't going to help that. But apparently that meant nothing. So that makes a lot of fucking sense. Just like none of this movie made sense. Even for a more combat movie. Give me a fucking break. And this movie's boring. It's a boring martial arts film. It's a boring movie. So much exposition for something that should be that fucking simple. Here's a tournament. You win or you die. How complicated could that be? But oh, this guy's a descendant of why don't we, why can't it just be Scorpion himself? Oh, because the studio mandated it. Well, then fine, I'll blame the studio. But you know what? I'd be like, you know what? This is a losing fucking battle. Don't make the movie, or fight the studio and go. This is bullshit. Someone get some balls. Someone do this cojones, or you're like, okay, we'll go along with it. Then some people don't bitch about it. And rightfully so. So fucking sorry. So sad. Too fucking bad. Welcome to the real world. Ain't all sunshine and rainbows. So. Cole. Bland ass motherfucker. Gets to Sonya. They talk about all these issues. They try to be funny where they make fun of the name Mortal Kombat. You made that up, Mortal Kombat? Look, it's even misspelled. There's a K there. You're not one to talk with talking about magic tattoos, whether on something being fucking silly. You're the one that created the magic tattoo shit. Well, if someone dies, like if you have a tattoo and I don't and I defeat you, I get a magic tattoo. Okay, what if I accidentally hit you with my car because I was drunk? Do I get the magic tattoo? And then do I get to be in the tournament? Is that how it works? That's what it seems like. I find that kind of stupid. Just I guess it's just me. Sonya has Kano tied up. And the guy who plays Kano, he's trying. Again, he's the only guy that's given at least some kind of personality to it. I'll give you that. But then they're attacked by this invisible creature that's a lizard man in CGI. I just wonder. Let's say you were... Somehow this was back in the days of cable. And you're scrolling through your TV channels and you came across this scene would you ever guess this was mortal fucking combat where these three are bowing this creature that's like from a sci-fi channel flick and I, again I'm like I think they said set in the reptilian creature but there's still that part of me that's like is this supposed to be reptile because reptile was a lot better than 95 movie you got a pretty damn good cut good fight scene and a good piece of music along with it in the 95 film if this is if this was supposed to be reptile otherwise if it isn't why send some generic lizard creature or if it's supposed to be reptile this is really fucking sad that this is reptile well i know his name is reptile but i thought he has he eventually turned into a man no he's always this lizard creature that's from uh fucking hunter from resident evil games I think that's what they're called. Fucking annoying fraudmen. Maybe it's the, the gecko from the Geico commercial's dad. I don't fucking know. So they kill the theme. Kano rips out its heart. And this is fan service done awkwardly. Because it just throws in dialogue because it was in the game. Game. In the game? Yeah, this game. If this was a gain, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> oh, man, I should just shoot myself if this is a gain. Gain up on everybody. No, this is no, this is the type of gain that sucks so bad if you try to shoot yourself, the bullet would run away from you. Because it's like, you ain't worth it. The bullet would be like a bullet from fucking who from Roger Rabbit, from Bob Haas' gun, and be like, nah, you ain't worth it. I'm going to mess with someone else you losers sayonara assholes 
the, the what the fuck was I talking about? No, the game. Reptile in the game. Oh, and the, the fan service. Kano rips the heart out of this lizard creature and goes, Kano wins. Why did he say that? Because it was in the game. I, I know, but you want to make this serious, gritty, more combat movie. But then you want to throw this stuff that you go, where the fuck did that come from? Oh my God, I heard it in the game. I'm like, it made sense when Shane Sun said flawless victory in the 95 film because a tournament was happening and he was the guy that's like the, I don't want to say a judge, but he was kind of watching through the side. You versus you fight. Like, that made sense in that. Here, it just... Kano wins. He said that just because. Because it was in the script, that's why. Because it was in the game. So, Sonya, Kano, and Cole go off to the fucking desert. And they find Lutain. Now, it's funny because Lutain walks up to him. Kano goes, hey, step back. You watch it right there. And then Lutain immediately fires a fireball at him. And then he goes, I am not your enemy. Well, that's strange. You just fired a fireball at one of us that could have cooked our nuts into a boil. But I I'm glad now you say you're not our enemy. I, I don't really trust you because you fired a fireball at one of us. <laughs> that's kind of over the top that you would fire a fireball on someone. And then go, I'm not your enemy. That'd be, that'd be like me kicking you in the nuts and going, Hey, how's it going? My name's... I don't give a fuck about your name. You kicked me in the balls. Where, what fucking sense does that make? I'm going to shoot a fireball at you that could have incinerated you. But it didn't. I guess that's the point. It didn't. But... The four of them meet Raiden, who's a block of fucking wood. God, it makes me miss Christopher Lambert. It really does. Sub-Zero Lutein fight, but it's not even a fight. Again, Lutein fires a fireball. Sub-Zero fires something. Sub-Zero grabs Lutein. Kung Lao comes in, throws his hat, pushes Sub-Zero back. That's the end. So, can you even call that a fight? Lu Tain and Kung Lao start training Cole. Fuck Cole! I don't give a fuck about Cole. Again, I'm talking so much about Cole than anybody else. I've talked more about Cole than Scorpion or Jax or Lu Tain. Because Lu Tain doesn't do much of shit. Except have a nothing fight with Cabal later on. Jax? Arm shattered by Sub-Zero... At the end, he fights this guy. I didn't even know who the fuck this was. Right, Ryko? I guess he's in the game. He's not in the game I played. So I didn't know who the fuck Ryko is. But the character in the movie is just a very boring... That's another thing. The, the villains, for the most part, are pretty boring. Like Cabal, I will say, I like the look of Cabal. Although, let me ask you guys about Cabal. Is Cabal from Brooklyn? I like the look of him. But it's Cabal from Brooklyn, because he's talking like, Oh, hey, the little loud piece of fucking shit. Scumbag. Because he's talking to, to Shane's son, Hey, Kano, we could get him on our side. There's Kano. The fucking, that little loud fucking piece of shit. Scumbag. You dumb motherfucker. It, it's, it's like, it's Cabal from Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklynese. That's almost like, hey, we got an R rating, so make sure this guy cusses a lot. But, I mean, of the villains, he was the one I was most interested in, to be perfectly honest. Uh, fuck Cole. I'm going to keep saying that hashtag. Cole thinks he's not good enough, so he goes back to his fucking farm with his ladies. And they send Goro, and Goro looks like shit. All done CGI. I find it ironic that 1995, 
you had an actual practical effect for Doro. But with a 50 million, almost three times the budget, in 2021, you have a CGI Goro that fights in a fucking barn. It's pretty much just throwing uh, coal around in a barn with a bunch of CGI falling down. Beats up coal, don't hurt the ladies, coal gets his superpower, and it's literal plot armor and some blades. He punches Goro a few times, slices him, and cut his hand off and stabs him in the eye. And the gore's not bad. I'll give you that. I think it's kind of sad that this is the guy that beats Goro. At least Johnny Cage beat Goro. Had a great moment with the nut punch. Or, those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. You're right. It's If you judge the two fights... Yes, you could easily tell me, man, there's a lot more choreography going on in this movie with the fight with Goro. You'd have a point. But at the same time, again, with the way the fights are edited, because I don't care about Cole, so that I don't care about whatever fight he's in. If I don't care about the guy, I'm just watching someone either do gymnastics or I'm watching someone go through the moves. I'm going, I have no emotional investment into this. You think of the martial arts movies that people enjoy. They enjoy J.I.T. Chan not just because he could do the moves, but they get an emotional investment with J.I.T. Chan because they like his personality, they like his smile, his comedy, that he's a likable, fun guy, and you really feel bad when he's getting beaten up. Or John Claude Van Damme and Bloodsport. Where Van Damme gives you that emotion, and people make fun of it nowadays, but to me, I love that emotion, that intensity. Come on, you know. It's like, yeah, he's into it. He was like, come get some, you motherfucker, you know. And when he's beating Chon Lee below Yun and he's doing the, the 360 kicks. Yeah, Chon, yeah. Yeah, there's physicality, there's intensity, there's emotion behind it. There is no fucking emotion behind this, whether it be humor or whether it be uh, adrenaline or whether it be exhilaration. If you took the gore away, what would you think of the scene? That's a question I would ask. Uh, I didn't even mention, I would say, the best gore scene in the movie. You have this flying bitch, Nataro. I guess it's not even a fight. She goes out to Kung Lao. Kung Lao gets on her back, throws his hat, saws her head through the, the hat. Good gore. Yeah, it's not really a fight. It wasn't really a fight at all. It was just, there was a good gore moment. I would say that was the best gore moment. And people want to talk about the gore because they say that's why the 95 film sucks. But this is great because of the gore. Let's go through all the gore before I get back to this. A little bit at the beginning. But nothing that will make you remember noteworthy wise about it i'm sorry if you i mean i got more emotion out of the beginning of revenge of the ninja i mean that little kid get a fucking ninja star to his face go watch revenge of the ninja with show Krasuti, the way that family got massacred that mo that is an insane opening revenge of the ninja i did a little kid got a fucking ninja star to the head <laughs> that's more crazy than Beginning of this movie. Sorry. Damn, go watch Revenge of the Ninja. Bote Jack gets his arm shattered, which you saw in the trailer. Kung Lao has the hat. The the bat lady bitch head goes through. The stuff with Goro that I mentioned. Kano. Sonya fights Kano. And Kano gets a, a fucking lawn gnome. To the eyeball. I almost don't want to count that because it's fucking stupid. But a lawn gnome. A fucking gnome. A lawn gnome. To the eyeball. Oh and then Sonya has a power. So Cole's fighting Melina with the crazy teeth. He's like I need help. And Sonya Blade boom. Ten seconds after she got it. She has a, her superpower now. Wow. Took a lot longer for these guys to get their superpower, but she learned it real quick. And you know, 
shoots a like a hole in Molina's stomach. Two people get burned by Cabal. Let's say like Liu Kang fights Cabal. It's not even much of a fight. They're blocking each other. Cabal cuts Liu Kang's arms. Liu Kang makes a fire dragon. Goes through Cabal. He's on fire. He dies. And then Sub-Zero. He gets burned as well. So that's two fatalities where the two people get burned. You think with all of the variety of fatalities, it could have been something even more creative. I got more creativity out of the way Sub-Zero died in 95 film when he got impaled and then crystallized and was frozen. So Goro, Cole, Cabal, Lutang. Oh, Jabs fight side guy uh, Rico. And that's the other door scene. Because there's a fight, Jax does the move, crushes Riko's head. Because it explodes. Because now Jax has the battle arms. Okay, a couple of gore scenes. That moment where Jax destroys the, the guy's head, the, the hat, the saw, I'll give you that one. The, the arm shattering... It, a lot of people liked it. To me, I wasn't impressed by the effects. I'm sorry. The effects didn't impress me. Like, of the gore scenes I liked, again, the... Really, is the... The Kung Lao against the Bat Bitch and... Jats destroying that one guy's head. That's really the only two gore scenes I gave a shit about. Because the one of Melina went by, like, really quick. And thankfully, the p camera pans, and there's the hole in her stomach, so... Now I realize what the fuck happened. And they do this thing where at times it'll go back and forth from a fight to another fight. Kind of like what they would do in the 2000s. When you had films like Cradle to the Grave. Where there's a fight scene, then we'll cut to this one, then cut back to that one, then cut to this one. And then when people get thrown around and they're made of CGI, there's no weight to them. Again, people talk weird in this. Like when Lutane does his fireball thing, the fire dragon, it goes through Cabal. He says the line, fatality for Kun Lao. N number one, who the fuck talks like that? Who the fuck literally says, that's like me going, I killed you. No shit. Blue Tane said that the Shane Stone in the first one because it was, hey, you said that before, I'm going to fire back at you, motherfucker. That made sense within the story here. And also, that Cabal didn't even kill Kung Lao. Shane Sun did. As if he killed Shane Sun, not Cabal. And then Cole goes to. Scorpion, because Scorpion has the two ladies. And out of the blue, Scorpion, I don't even understand how the fuck Scorpion came back. He just says, I'm back from hell. Okay, why did it take you so long? Why now? I guess something to do. Cole, was it the power of love from Cole? I don't fucking know. But now Scorpion's back. When he says, get over here, it's both of so I can barely hear, get over here. Even the 95 film and the direct -to video Scorpion's Revenge anime film, at least they were more clear. Get over here. It's a get over here. And again, the fight, I didn't give a shit. It's the closest I gave a shit. And a lot, of, I mean, some of that you saw in the trailer already. And Sub Zero. And Scorpion fight. And then Scorpion needs Cole's help. Because, yeah, Scorpion can't defeat Sub-Zero on his own. He needs this f fucking idiot named Cole to help him. Uh, if you're a diehard fan of Scorpion, I'd be very curious about your thoughts on that. That 
Scorpion needed Cole to help him, and it's a two-on-one fight where the two of them are fighting Sub-Zero. And Cole gets more hits on Scorpion. I mean, uh, Cole gets more hits on Sub-Zero than Scorpion does. Then Scorpion burns him, so it's a, the second guy that gets burned. Cabal now did him. And it wasn't even, I don't think it was that satisfying of a fucking fatality. Because we already saw one person get burned. So seeing a second person get burned just seemed repetitive. And then the fact that he needed Cole's help. Ah, shit. Fuck Cole. Fuck. Fuck. I'm fucking tired of Warner Brothers. I'm tired of HBO Max. Doing this bullshit. If you like the film, fine. I mean, even this music sucks. The score is as generic, bland, and boring as the fucking movie. And they even try to do a, a, a version of the theme song at the end, and it's a fucking horrible rendition of it. Terrible. Terrible rendition of the Mortal Kombat theme. If you like the film, that's fine. Positives. Kano at least brought a little bit of personality, but even he was talking a bit too much. But yeah, at least he brought some charm and personality. Kun Lao, he really had nothing to do, but the few moments he had, like when he was verbally sparring with Kano, I didn't mind that part. When he killed that Nataro lady, that was a cool moment. Of course, then he's the, the, the one good guy that dies. Figures. Um, Shane Stone sucks his soul out. And then... Again, some of the gore. But I've seen so many films by this point with gore that that doesn't impress me. Gore is a nice asset to a film. I will complain a film, oh, it doesn't have gore, doesn't have the best gore, because... Again, it could be a good asset. It could be a good seasoning for your dish, so to speak. It could be a nice ingredient to have to make the food taste better. But that doesn't mean it's the end-all, be-all. I mean, if I want gore, I could go watch Dead Alive. I could go watch Evil Dead 2. I could go watch a number of slasher films from back in the day. I could watch Rambo 4. That's, that's pretty fucking gory. And yes, it's CGI gore. Just like this is CGI gore. But Rambo 4, at least I care about Rambo. I like the score better. I like the pacing better. I like the action better. I, yes, I even like the story better. And the fact that it's not even about the tournament. It's before the tournament. Like, I give a shit. Because they want to make a cinematic universe. I'm fucking sick and tired of that. I don't... I almost want to say fuck Marvel because I'm tired of the cinematic universe shit. But technically it's not Marvel's fault. It's other people's fault for trying to copy the shit. How many fucking cinematic universes have fucking worked? Except Marvel. It didn't work for The Mummy. And when Universal tried to do it. Didn't work for all these other people that tried to do it. Stop doing it. Just make one film and one film only. If you do make a sequel and you have a good idea, then you do it. But so many times when you're like, we're going to make two, three, four movies. And then the first film barely gets out, barely gets noticed, and then you don't hear about it. And maybe by luck, on video on demand, you'll get a sequel. That'll probably be a lower budget. And even if it gets a sequel, why should I give a shit? Because why, why should I care about a boring blank of slate called Raiden? Or this non-charismatic Lutein. Or this snooze-inducing Sonya Blade. They have no charm, no charisma, and no personality. Oh, so I can see more of Cole? Wow, I can't wait to see more adventures of Cole. The Rise of Cole. The Return of Cole. Cole Annihilation. Yeah, I really want to see more of that. I really want to hear more generic music... Doesn't even have any cool songs. Even Annihilation had that. 
Again, I, I'm not kidding where I said if I was forced, well, I didn't. I would just watch 95 More Combat or Scorpion's Revenge. But if someone had a gun to my head, you have to pick one. I'm like, at least More Combat Annihilation is less boring. It doesn't have coal. The characters are from the game, even though you utilize poorly. Just like this does. At least it felt like it went at a faster pace. And Jax, I like. Jax, I like more than that film than anybody in this movie. Jax was actually pretty cool. And they actually had an arc to his character. Where he realized, you know what? I don't need this metal shit. Fuck this. I got my... This is all I need. And he beats the fuck out of the Mutaro, whatever the hell his name was. That's funny. The, Jax actually had an arc in Annihilation. as shitty. And it is a shitty and it is a horrible movie. But damn, it's got a good soundtrack. Well, the animalities are goofy. Yeah, so is the magic tattoos. They're goofy as shit in this too. What am I supposed to give a fuck about the adventures of Cole? Fuck this movie. This movie is boring as shit. Again, all that advertisement of Scorpion sub they're barely in the fucking movie. Especially Scorpion. He's barely in the fucking film with all the hype. Actual scorpion with the mask, which by the way, the colors seem diluted. I could barely tell he was wearing any yellow. Just like Sub-Zero, I'm like, does he have blue? Does he have blue? Is there blue? Could barely fucking tell. The, again, the colors are so fucking diluted. At least with their costumes. I, I can't say the cinematography, but their costumes were. Could barely fucking tell. Is it gray one and gray two? And more common annihilation, at least I liked Cyrax, you know, the villain. I don't know, I just... That's like more inner, hilarious bad. Like, if you cut out the shit where they killed Johnny Cage, although the actor looks nothing like Lyndon Ashby, so... But, I mean, that that's one of the things I hate about more common annihilation. So I, just, I don't like either movie, but I'm just... Just go watch Scorpion's Revenge. Go watch the, the 95 films that bad movie. Just by all these people. Oh, it's a guilty pleasure now. Oh, it, like, if you don't like the film, you don't like the film. But the 1995 movie kissed this movie's ass in terms of action, characters, personality, charm, humor, entertainment, better fight scenes, better editing on fight scenes, better choreography of fight scenes. It's actually about the fucking tournament, and it's not it's about Lou Kane. It's about an actual fucking character for Mortal Kombat, not some piss and named Cole. Boring as fuck character. So fuck this movie. Cold Combat, The Rise of Cole. You can suck my fucking dick. Later. Fuck this movie.